Hello everyone, Dr. Kofi here and welcome to my YouTube channel, Tutor Med. And as many of you have come to realize, medicine is simplified here. In today's video, we are going to discuss the ECG changes of ST elevation myocardial infarction and the criteria we use to see that this patient indeed has an ST elevation myocardial infarction. Have you subscribed yet? If not, kindly support us by doing that now and let's get started. And so as promised, there will be a series on ECG interpretation to discuss the rate, rhythm and how to identify the axis and other things later on the channel. But for the purposes of this topic, we need some basic principles to be able to understand ECG changes in STEMI and so let's get to this. Now, this is an ECG strip and we want to discuss its basic features. Remember that the ECG is a graphical representation of the heart's electrical activity. And so just like the green graph book we used in mathematics, this strip has an x-axis and the y-axis. The y-axis measures the amplitude of each wave from the baseline and this is recorded in voltage in millivolts and the x-axis measures the duration of these waves recorded in time seconds although some use milliseconds now notice that just like our graph book the strip has big boxes and each of these big boxes has five small boxes and notice that five small boxes make up one big box now let's focus on the small box which is the smallest dimensional unit of the strip. The small box has a horizontal dimension, which is one millimeter, and a vertical dimension, which is also one millimeter. On the y-axis, the small box is equal to, or the one millimeter of the small box on the y-axis is equal to 0.1 millivolts. And on the x-axis, one small box is equal to 0.04 seconds or 40 milliseconds please keep these basic dimensions in your mind that for a small box it is 0.1 millivolts high and 0.04 or 40 milliseconds wide and so let's practicalize this concept using this diagram here is an ecg strip showing the big boxes each with their five small boxes. If each small box is one millimeter high and one millimeter wide, then it makes sense that each big box should be five millimeters high and five millimeters wide. All right, let's assume that this is the ECG tracing of the electrical activity of a patient's heart. This is the P wave, which represents atrial depolarization. We will visit this later on the channel and we have the QRS complex for ventricular depolarization and then the T wave for ventricular repolarization. Good. And so let's use the P wave as an example. You would agree with me that the P wave is just one small box high and 2.5 small boxes wide. In other words, it's one millimeter high and 2.5 millimeters wide. To state them, in their units of measurement, we would say the P wave is 0.1 millivolts high and 0.10 seconds wide. How did I arrive at a 0.1 seconds? Remember, every small box is 0.04, and then the P wave occupies 2.5 millimeters, and so to get a time, it is 2.5 times 0.04 seconds, and that is how come we had the 0.1. I'm sure by now you are realizing that it is more convenient to see one small box or one millimeter high and that is how we want to simplify it then we take the p wave also as an example it is approximately two small boxes high and four small boxes wide in other words it's two millimeters high four millimeters wide and to state this in the unit of measurement it's approximately 0.2 millivolts high and 0.16 seconds wide. 
Now, to understand the universally accepted criteria for diagnosing STEMI, let's look at the concept of contiguous leads. What are they? Contiguous leads are two or more leads which look at the same side of the heart. Please remember that the standard ECG is made up of 12 leads, 6 limb leads, and then 6 chest leads. For now, let's look at the limb leads. Now follow me closely. Draw the heart any how you want to draw it. And then draw a horizontal line through it. Next, draw a vertical line. Now you will see that you've drawn the four cardinal points, right? The north, east, south, and west. Now draw a line here on the left and there on the right and here and also there and then beginning from this place put the first limb lead there AVL augmented voltage lead L then here lead 1 and then lead 2 and here put AVF and then lead 3 and then AVR, so we have the six limb leads. Always practice this drawing and the positionings of these leads. The explanation will come up later on this channel. Now, if I asked you, based on your drawing, which leads look at the inferior surface of the heart, what will be your response? Yes, you are right. The inferior leads are leads two, AVF, and lead three. And for the lateral surface on the left, the lateral leads are leads 1 and AVL. This means by definition, leads 2, AVF and 3 are anatomically contiguous leads. Why? Because they look at the same side or the same surface of the heart, the inferior surface. While leads 1 and AVL are also contiguous leads because they look at the same surface of the heart, the lateral surface. Now I'm going to mention another concept which you have to keep in mind. Please note that the inferior leads and the two lateral leads here, which are leads 1 and AVL, are reciprocal leads of each other. In other words, they are mirror leads. And because they are mirror leads, whatever a group of leads do, the reciprocal lead show the opposite. For example, if there are ST elevations in leads 2, 3 and AVF, the reciprocal leads which are 1 and AVL will show the opposite, which is ST depression. And so how about the chest leads? So draw the heart once again and draw your four cardinal points horizontal line and the vertical line and then begin by putting the first chest lead here as V1 and then V2 and if you are familiar with how we place the chest electrodes you would realize that we put V4 here at the apex of the heart before we come to V3 which is placed between V2 and V4 and then follow this with V5 and V6 Keep practicing this drawing as well, always so that it can be part of you. And so based on this drawing, we have the septal leads or the leads which visualize the septum to be V1 with or without V2 because sometimes some literature adds V2 to the anterior leads. But V1 is certainly a septal lead. Then for the anterior leads, or the leads which look at the anterior wall of the heart, we have V2, V3, V4. And then the lateral leads, which are V5 and V6, for the lateral precordial leads. But remember that leads 1 and AVL are also lateral limb leads. And so in all, we have four lateral leads leads 1, AVL, leads V5, and V6. 
now having established these principles, let's look at the universally accepted criteria of the ECG changes of the ST elevation myocardial infarction. And so for the ST segment elevation, the rule says there should be new ST elevation in at least two contiguous leads, for example, in lead 2, AVF, and lead 3, because they are contiguous leads, and the ST elevation has to be in at least two of them. And then these ST elevations have to be at least one millimeter above the baseline in all leads. If this happens, then the patient can be considered to have STEMI, of course, correlating it with the clinical presentation, as there are other causes of ST elevation on the ECG. However, there are exceptions in how high the ST elevation should be in V2 and V3. It doesn't follow the 1 mm rule. And so, for V2 and V3, for us to consider that the patient truly has to me, it depends on the age of the patient. In women, instead of being at least 1 mm above the baseline, it has to be at least 1.5 mm above the baseline. How about in men? Really, it depends on the age of the patient, unlike the woman. So if he is less than 40 years, it has to be at least 2.5 mm above the baseline. And if he is 40 years and above, the ST elevation has to be at least 2 mm or 2 small boxes above the baseline. Now on this slide, let's take a look at a sample ECG. This shows all the 12 leads of a standard ECG. These demarcations, demarcations 1, 2, and 3, shows where a particular lead ends and where the other begins. So as you can see, we have lead 1, lead 2, lead 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, V1, V2, V3, V4, on the far right, V5, and V6. Ignore the repeated V1 reading shown below. However, notice that lead 2 has been repeated in its entire length. This is called a rhythm strip. Now notice that there are ST segment elevations in lead 2, lead 3, and AVF. Now because it occurred in at least two contiguous leads with 3 mm above the baseline, this patient has STEMI if he presented with myocardial ischemic chest pain. Specifically, he has inferior ST elevation myocardial infarction because the ST elevations were recorded in the inferior leads. Now, do you notice something else? Do you notice that there are ST depressions in leads 1 and AVL? This is not because there is subendocardial ischemia going on there, but it is because, like we said, leads 1 and AVL are reciprocal leads of leads 2, AVF, and lead 3. And so if leads 2, 3, and AVF are showing ST elevations, then the mirror leads or reciprocal leads will show the opposite, which are ST segment depressions. Alright everyone, please do not forget to take a break at this point to like and share our video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that yet. Now when interpreting the ECG of a patient with suspected STEMI, one of the things that masks or makes the diagnosis of STEMI very difficult is the presence of a left band or branch block. The other is ventricular pacing, but let's focus on the left band or branch block. And so how is left band or branch block detected on the ECG? There are many ways, about five of them, to detect this, but we will focus on two very simple ones. Let's illustrate them with this diagram. The leads we should pay attention to when looking for left band or branch block are V1 and V6. And so for V1, first, examine the QRS complexes there and ask, are they white? 
Usually, the QRS complex should be less than 3 mm or 3 small boxes wide. And so if they are more than 3 mm or 3 small boxes wide, then they are described as wide or broad complexes. Next, after identifying the wide QRS complex in V1, look for a dominant S-wave. The way to do this is, look at the QRS complex and ask, are they pointing more positive or up? Or are they pointing down, more negative? If they are pointing more negative or down, that is a dominant S-wave. And so if you have a wide QRS complex with a dominant S-wave, then you have a left bundle branch block. Sometimes the S-wave will be notched, giving a W pattern as shown in this diagram. Now let me throw this unrelated information here, that in right bundle branch block, instead of having a dominant S-wave, you would have a dominant R-wave in V1. And then that R-wave will be notched, giving an M pattern in V1 instead of a W pattern in V1. Now let's look at lead V6. If you don't use V1, you can use V6. And so for V6, you look for a wide and a notched dominant R wave, which gives the M shape, as shown here. Alright, and so if left bundle branch block is present, we use a special criteria to interpret the ECG. We use the Smith modified Garbosa criteria to interpret the ECG. Originally, this criteria was simply called the Garbosa criteria, but to increase its diagnostic value, Smith modified it, and so we have the Smith modified Garbosa criteria. It is made up of three parameters and it gives a total score of 10. So a score of at least three is positive for STEMI. There will be another short video on Smith modified Garbosa criteria, but I want us to note that if a left bundle branch block is present, the criteria to use to interpret the ECG for STEMI is actually the Smith modified Garbosa criteria. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the Tutor Med community, our take home summary. The first point is that the ECG is pivotal in diagnosing ST elevation myocardial infarction and there is a criteria to follow. Number two, contiguous leads are leads which look at the same surface or side of the heart. For example, leads two, three, and AVF are described as contiguous leads because they look at the inferior surface of the heart and so are called inferior leads. Point number three, reciprocal leads are leads which face each other. For example, leads two, three, and AVF, which are inferior leads, and then leads one and AVL, which are lateral leads. These two group of leads are described as reciprocal leads. Now, when there is ST elevation in any of them, the other group will show ST depression because they face each other and so there are mirror leads of each other. Last point is that the Smith modified Garbosa criteria is used to diagnose STEMI in patients with left bundle branch block. Thank you for watching and kindly subscribe if you have not done that yet like and then share our video see you in our next lecture bye